Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mariah and I talk about books and bookish things on my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so happy to see you all returning and to talk to you guys about books and all sorts of things. So please keep that up. Today's a very special video. Today we're going to be talking about Medieval Athon, which is hosted by Holly Hart's Books. And over on Twitter and on YouTube, I'll make sure to leave all of that information down below. It goes from January 10th to February 10th. You start out as a prisoner and you work your way through the levels. You work your way through the levels to become an emperor or an empress, depending on what you want to do. And then you also choose your profession. Now there's cleric, blacksmith, bard, tailor, and baker. I chose bard and... Oh, tailor slash seamstress. So uh, we're going to go through the levels that there are for that. There are five levels for each profession and we're going to go over my TBR for both of them. Uh, first is bard. First is bard and you start out as a bard as a tavern poet which the prompt is read a book where there, which has a great first line. For this prompt I chose where Dreams End by Janelle Angelis. This is this is a fantasy book that I've been told is Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera meets The Night Circus and I love Moulin Rouge and I love The Phantom of the Opera so I'm really looking forward to picking this up. This is the Elkrate uh, version so it has no dust jacket it just has this beautiful foil covers. The words in the back say the stage is set, the spectacle awaits, and the first line of this book and why I chose it for this is Never come to hell house, never come to hellfire house without wearing a mask. It just it grabs your attention, it gets you interested. I'm really looking forward to it. Again, I'm not an Alcrate affiliate. Anything that you see is just because I spend an inordinate amount of money on Alcrate every month, and I'm a little obsessed. This book is also on my TBR of the month, so I'm not adding a book for it at all. And if you're interested in that, I will leave that linked in the cards. Level two of Bard is Traveling Troubadour, and it is to read a book with a traveling element. And for that, I'm reading Crown of Feathers. This is not the book, obviously, this is just the book jacket. I have the book somewhere else where I was reading it. I've already started this book. This is the story of two sisters, Veronica and Val, and Veronica uh, is obsessed with finding the Phoenix Riders, who were a who are a legendary band of phoenix riders who fought against the empire in a war and she's determined to join them and she has this big falling out with her sister and she leaves and decides to disguise herself as a boy to join the phoenix riders her sister shows up and reveals this whole web of lies and it's up to Veronica to kind of save the Phoenix Riders, save herself, and save the world in which this empire exists. I can already say that this is really hard to read, not because it's bad, but it's beautifully written. It has these multimedia-esque scraps of information in it which talks about the history of the world and the myths that surround Phoenixes and how we got to this point. But wow, <laughs> did the first four chapters decide to rip your heart out. Five chapters? Five chapters decide to rip your heart out and feed it back to you in like little tiny pieces. It hurts me. <laughs> um, that book satisfies it beautifully and it's just, it's so good so far. Next is level three. Level three, House Musician. A book that's a character name. So for this one, I chose Alana the First Adventure by Tamora Pierce. This is the first book in the Lioness Rampant Quartet and is the first book that we are reading for my read-along, the Tamora Pierce Along. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the description. But this is an introduction to Alana as a character and to all the other characters in the universe. This is a reread for me but it's one that's near and dear to my heart. This tells the story of Alana, who wants nothing more to be a knight, so she and her twin brother Thom switch places and she is sent off to night school in her brother's place. Now, all sorts of shenanigans ensue, but it's really good and you get an introduction to the world as a whole, 
which is just... I can't explain how much the characters in this quartet mean to me, so I'm really excited to get back to that and the live show for this book is on January 31st, which is a Sunday. Next is Bard College, a book over 400 pages, and for that I chose Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. This is the William Morrow covers, I think they're the retro covers. They were, um, the color illustrations are done by Robert McGinnis. There are only like five Neil Gaiman books in the entire Neil Gaiman bibliography that have these covers and I am obsessed with them. <laughs> this is a spin-off book of American Gods which tells the story of Shadow and how he gets entangled with the gods as a whole. This is the story of a man named Fat Charlie Nancy who is actually the son of the god Ananansi, which is an African trickster god and is a spider. Um, he didn't know his father was a god until his father dies on a karaoke stage in Florida and he's left with his brother spider on his doorstep. And things are about to get really interesting and really dangerous. This is... 432 pages with the acknowledgments. It's a, it's a little bit chunky, but not too bad. Um, I'm really looking forward I, to this book. I absolutely adored American Gods. I love Neil Gaiman as a whole. So we're gonna keep reading Neil Gaiman. Also look at these. This is, these are the retro like 1970s-esque covers. I'm gonna have to go through a video of what those are eventually. Let me know down below if you're interested in seeing what covers I have for my Neil Gaiman collection. Next is level 5, which is Legendary Bard. A book with multiple authors. And for this, I chose one of my newest books. Actually, my newest book. And that is A Universe of Wishes uh, a We Need Diverse Books anthology edited by Danielle Clayton. This is a short story collection about uh, with diverse authors including Tara Sim who wrote We Scavenge of the Stars which ripped my heart out in 2020. It also has Libba Bray who wrote the Diviner series and she wrote a series, uh, Gemma Art, no, Gemma something series. I'll put it down below. Zoretta so Cordova, who wrote Incendiary. Um, Rebecca Roanhorse, who wrote um, The Lightning Trail and also Black Sun, which is everywhere right now. Tochi Onobuchi, who wrote uh, Riot Baby. Um, v. Schwab, who wrote. Um, who has written a plethora of books, including the Color of Magic series, Nick Stone, and just a whole bunch of really awesome authors. This is, it's just a plethora of authors and a plethora of short stories. I can't wait to dive into this and learn more. This was the Owl Crate edition in the Owl Crate Winter Wishes box, which I, if you're interested in what was in that box, I'll have it linked. This was the book in that, and I'm very, 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 very excited to get into this. Next is the tailor and seamstress. And if you're wondering, Mariah, what does a bard have to do with tailor and seamstress? Well, if you're a poor bard, you can't really pay someone to make your costumes, right? Right. So now they're also a seamstress. See what I did there? Uh, label one, level one is a draper's assistant, and it's a book you're unsure about. And for that, I chose Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is a contemporary um, LGBTQIA plus romance, and uh, this tells the story of Luke O'Donnell, who is tangentially famous. He is the child of two rock stars who had a pretty famous divorce, and now his father is making a comeback, so he's dragged into limelight. But one, one compromising photo could ruin everything. So instead he makes a bargain with a, um, with a man named Oliver Blackwood, who is 
pretty much nice and normal. He's a barrister, he's an ethical vegetarian, he's pretty, you know, lackluster, just run of mill, salt of the earth type guy. And they decide to start fake dating. If this has anything like um, red, white, and royal blue, which I read last month, I'm gonna love it. However, I'm still pretty unsure about it because I am not really into contemporaries and I'm not really into romances still. So, this is try number two for the contemporary romance, specifically contemporary queer romance. And I really hope I like it as much as I liked Red, White, and Royal Blue, but I'm still a little unsure about it. Level two is The Weaver, the first book in the series, and for that I chose The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste, Corinne Lemaire, and she is not afraid of anything, especially Jumbies, which she is convinced that grown-ups just made it up to scare children. What she doesn't know is that there are jumbies on the island and they are plotting against her. One day she shows up at home and she runs across Severine, who is con who is just hell-bent on enchanting her Corrine's father and taking over the island for her own. This is a middle grade horror book, or middle grade fantasy horror book, that's set on an island in the Caribbean and is based off Caribbean folklore. Tracy Baptiste herself is from Trinidad, but the Part of the inspiration for this book came for, from a Haitian folktale called The Magic Orange Tree. I'm absolutely loving this book so far. It's spooky and it's creative and it illuminates the diversity that there is in the world. And it's a fairy tale based in the Caribbean, which we don't get very often. If you're interested at all in this book, please pick it up. I'm reading it on Scribd. Again, not an affiliate, I just really like Scribd and read off of it like literally all the time. Uh, the audiobook is great and the ebook are both there. It's less than two it's less than two hundred pages. You should definitely pick it up. Uh, especially if you're interested in any of the folklore from the Caribbean, which I am because I fell in love with the folklore of the Caribbean and what modern Caribbean authors are doing with that with Nell Hopkinson's work into 2020. Level three, a book embossed or foiled on the cover. And for this, I chose Crier's War by uh, Nina Varela. This is the story of a girl who is determined to bring about the end of the rule of the Automata. The Automata are a android-esque group of people who are robot-esque androids, but like Blade Runner androids who are ruling over the humans after the humans lost a war and their leader is the, um, their leader is the Sovereign and the, one of the main characters, Ayla, is working to bring down their rule and she does this by getting close to the Sovereign's daughter, Lady Cryer. Lady Cryer is assumed to be perfect, but what they don't know is that she has a fatal flaw. And we won't know that till that is, what that is until, obviously, I read the book. It is a sapphic, I've heard there are sapphic romance elements to this book, and it's a sci-fi, not a fantasy. I'm really excited to get into it. The Owl Crate cover, which this is, is embossed. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's embossed. All of these little designs are embossed. I'll put a better picture up here. Um, again, not an Alcrate affiliate, just really interested. Also, uh, comes a letter from the author, which she writes so tiny. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. It is a little chunky, but I'm still really looking forward to diving into this. I'd like to remind you that this, the read-along goes from February, January 10th to February 10th. I have timed it on this, as well as all my TBR stuff. Level four. Level four is a tailor shop owner, and the prompt for that is a book, the last book you bought. I'm gonna come clean and say I do not do hauls on this channel for a number of reasons. One, I know that people, a lot of people, can't afford hauls. It For a lot of people, libraries, scribd, services like that are essential to their reading, and I don't think that it's fair 
in today's world, especially with COVID going on, to flaunt how many books I, I buy. The last gibber I went on, I did pick up Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Catherine Arden is known for her adult fantasy series, which is the starts with The Bear and the Nightingale. This is her middle grade horror book, which tells the story of an 11 year old who discovers a book called Small Spaces, which tells the story of a girl, the two boys who love her, and the deal that is struck with a seemingly malevolent being. Now, the 11 year old goes on a school trip the next day and to a farm and they the bus breaks down. Their teacher leaves them, the scarecrow team being closer, and she decides that it is up to her to save everybody and the bus driver tells her, seemingly ominously, stick to the small spaces. R.L. Stein blurbed this book, said it was is it a mystery, a fairy tale, a horror thriller? As a suspense group to me, I just wanted to know one thing. What happens next? Terrifying and fun. Which honestly is not for me. It's not very long, it's middle grade. Uh, this is part of my... If you want a more in-depth like summary, please just go check out my TBR for a January video. And then level five. Level 5 is Fashion Trends Setter, the prettiest books on your shelves. I like pretty covers. I have a plethora of them. I have preferences on covers. I'm just... Now, do I have multiple copies of a book? No. The only book I have even seemingly multiple copies of is Jane Eyre, and I have Jane Eyre and Jane Slayer. That's it. That's all. I will trade it in a book once I find a cover that I like more or if I get it in a um, in a format I like more and that normally those books will go to my local bookstore, my local charity shop, or my little sister because she absolutely adores getting books in the mail so a lot of my middle grade books or books that I loved as a child that my mom read to me so I know they're okay to send to her get sent to her. With that being said I had a very very, 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 very hard time finding the prettiest book on my shelf. I'm convinced all of my books are beautiful, except for the Michael Crichton covers. Those are... I don't... I don't know what it is about, like, mystery, science fiction, thriller covers. They're just... don't. They just don't. But, uh, my husband decided for me, and he said, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is a Romeo and Juliet uh, story set in 1920s Shanghai. I just got this book in the December Owlcrate box. Um, it, this, of course, this is the Owlcrate cover. It came with a letter from the author right here. And it also came with art on the back of the dust cover. This is, it says, this, the year is 1926 and Shanghai hunts the tomb of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the street red, numbing the city to its chaos. At the heart of it all is 18-year-old Juliet Kai, a former flapper girl who has returned to begin her duties as a proud heir of the Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations. But and behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov, who has Juliet's first love until he betrayed her. But when gangsters on both sides start clawing their own throats out, the people start to whisper of a contagion, a madness of a monster in the shadows. As the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns aside and work together, no matter their personal grudges. For if they cannot contain this mayhem, then there will be no city left for either to rule. And this spectacular reimagining of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, debut author Chloe Gong brings readers on a heart-stopping journey of violence, passion, and star-crossed face. Star-crossed fates. Um, it's signed, beautifully so. Um... And the prologue, it begins with, in glittering Shanghai, a monster awakens. I guess I could use this for the Book of the Great First Line too, but either way, 
I'm so freaking excited to read this. I can't. I just... I want this book so bad in my life. I just do. I want it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but that is all 10 that will get me to the level of Empress com and complete two uh, professions. I don't need to complete two professions, technically speaking. I could um, read the five for my bar profession and then two extra. I am part of the, also part of the Storograph Challenge which I will link down below for both the Bard and the Taylor, um, Bard and the Taylor Professions. Uh, today's drink is in my mug of winter mugs mug, and it's just the, um, Waking After the Thaw, um, tea that was in the Wishes box, um, the Winter Wishes box, which again is linked in the cards. This is pepperminty with black tea and, and brewery bus and just that doesn't need sugar or anything it's literally so good I'm actually going to take a third drink that's probably going to be the thumbnail if I'm honest um, yeah, that wraps up this video. If you are interested in Medieval Athon, please check out Holly Hart's books. All the information, like I said, is going to be down below. It's also at Medieval Athon on Twitter. January 10th is the first day. The last day is February 10th, so you have a lot of time, a solid month, to get as much reading as you can in. Um, if you're interested in this, or you're participating, please leave your TBR links Please leave your TBR links down below, and if you don't have a channel or a blog or anything, let me know what books, what profession you would choose. And um, again, the professions are baker, blacksmith, clergy, tailor, seamstress, or tailor slash seamstress, and bard. And all of that information can be found down below. It is a Google Share document. The the graphics are just. Perfect. Like I said, I'm really hoping to get to Empress, uh, which if I keep going at the rate I'm reading, I'll get to. Um, if you're interested in this at all, let me know down below. If you want to see more of my content, you can always subscribe and leave me a comment and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you are... If you're looking for me on any of the social media, it's all can be found down below as well as information make you a better global citizen. All that being said, I still have massive amounts of work so this video is going to go up late for which I apologize but I have massive amount of work to do still tonight so I'm going to let you guys go. If you're seeing, uh, I really hope that you like, comment, and subscribe. We are two people away from my 80 subscriber count and I just really, be really cool if I got it to 80 subscribers again be the third time <laughs> but uh with all of that being said i hope you guys have a great re week and i will see you guys again on thursday so all the best coffee wine and books to you cheers <laughs>